Hi, I'm Tracy Wallace with INE. And today I want to show you a demonstration of working with Azure peer to peer transitive routing. In this demonstration, I'm going to take three separate virtual networks that are con connected in a hub and spoke architecture. And what I'm going to do is set up transitive routing between two spokes and really just go through that process. And to, to start out, what I want to do is I want to show you the topology that I'm going to use in this demonstration and how we're going to go forward. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, here you can see a topology diagram. This is actually pretty cool. This is Network Watcher in Azure and uh, through the Azure portal. And what I've got, I've got three separate virtual networks. I've got the hub net, I've got the spoke B and the spoke A. Now, unfortunately, I didn't put them quite in the order that I wanted, so I'll draw over a little bit. Okay, I've got peer-to-peer -peer connectivity between spoke A and hub net, and I've got peer-to-peer -peer connectivity between hub net and spoke B. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and be able to route between machines that are in spoke A and spoke B. All right now, I've got virtual machines. I've got the spoke A VM, and I've got the spoke V VM. Now, they are not directly connected, right? So effectively, what I really want to do is go all the way out here through the hub, back to the other spoke, and a little bit roundabout, be less roundabout if we put them out the other way, but there we go. All right, now, in the hub network, I'm going to clear all that out. In the hub network, I've got a couple of VMs. I've got a hub VM, which is just, by the way, all the hub VM, the spoke VMs, oh, there's a VM. Those are all just Windows Server 2016 data center. The router that I'm using is a PFSense router. And it's just a uh, marketplace image that I pulled up and I'm using for these purposes. Right? And what I'm going to do is go ahead and go through the process of really setting up this entire flow. Okay? And what you see here is the beginning. Now, the first thing that I want to do with this flow is I want to check my networks and make sure that my peerings are set up correctly. So I can actually navigate over there from the topology. And if I go to my spoke B subnet, and I go to the peerings, I've got a connection between spoke B and hub. And if I check this connection, the forwarded traffic has been enabled for this peering connection. I do not have it enabled in the other direction, but this is the one that matters. And if I go back and then I go to the spoke A network, and if I go to the peering relationships here, I can see also that I've got the forwarding set up. Now, if you choose to go through this demonstration, then the link to the template is in the blog post for this. You can also yourself uh, go ahead and, and you know, deploy this, and it's going to be set up this way because I literally just deployed this template. All right, but that's the basic setup. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in to the next step, which is to configure the router. Right. And to configure the router, I'm going to pop into a virtual machine. This virtual machine is on the hub network. This is my hub virtual machine. And I am connected to the PFSense server. And what I'm going to do, haven't done anything other than connect. The first thing I'm going to do for this server is I am just going to go through the uh, standard setup. And I'm going to just take all of the defaults here. Right? And obviously, if this were production, you'd be hopefully doing something a little bit more careful than this. Apparently, I have caps lock on. There we go. And we are set up. All right. Now, the only other thing I need, I need to do, obviously, in a production environment, please do more than this. Okay. But I need to set up the firewall for this particular network virtual appliance. I need to add a rule that is going to allow for my remote desktop traffic. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add this a bit 
uh, sloppily just because I want to kind of kind of get this done without having to do too much for demonstration purposes. Again, please do a bit more than this. I'm just setting up a any to any rule on 3389, essentially opening this wide up. I'm gonna save it and apply the changes. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I will tell you, honestly, I'd never used a PF Sense before uh, this morning. And that was pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to get started, and it's now up and running. Now, as far as the router is concerned, for routing in general, there is one more thing that I need to do. We might as well go back to the network topology. I have to check my NIC and make sure that I've got IP forwarding set up on the NIC. So I jump back to my NIC and I go to IP configurations and there I can see that that is in fact enabled. Now, just so you know, the way I initially set this up, I have this set up on a, uh, I have this set up on a template now, but if you just go pfSense, the NetGate pfSense VPN router is the one I selected. I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but it actually configures your uh, network interface card or NIC, virtual NIC correctly. All right, so I now have my router set up the way that I want. And the next thing that I need to do now is I need to go ahead and create a couple of route tables. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and for some reason it seems not to want to create those. Oh, that's because I'm still trying to create that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create those route tables. Route table, create, and this one is going to have the name of spoke A R T resource group. It's going to be O2 tasks, hopefully, and enabled and go. Now, once that starts creating, I'll go ahead just to save some time and I will create the second route table. Which is going to be spoke B RT. And we will go ahead and create that. Now I'm going to wait for just a moment until both of those route tables are created. All right, both of those route tables have provisioned. So let's just take a look at my route tables and there they both are. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to my spoke A and spoke A is gonna be associated with my virtual network spoke A, and it needs to set up a route that's going to configure routing for spoke B. So I'm gonna to go to the routes, and I'm gonna add in a route. And this route is just gonna to be to spoke B. And the address prefix, of course you need to know where you're going, 10.2.0.0 slash 16. And this is going to go to my virtual appliance, which is at 10.1.0.10. .10. Easy enough. That sets up the first route, and that'll take just a moment. That should be back momentarily. While we're waiting for that, I can actually go ahead and associate this with my subnet A. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna associate, pretty simple, there's spoke A, I said subnet A, spoke A and the default subnet. Okay. Now one thing I'm going through here relatively quickly, the one thing that can be a little bit challenging that you're going to have to, you know, just kind of keep track of is that as you're kind of flying around setting up these routes and assigning one route to a subnet that's connecting over to a different subnet, just, you know, kind of try and keep those things uh, in, you know, straight in your head. And so here, and it's pretty easy, I can say, okay, here's my subnet, and I connect it up to the 10.0.0 slash 24 subnet, which is great. 
and the route is the 10.216, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my other route table. I'm going to go ahead and add a route to my spoke B, and that's going to be to spoke A. And the address prefix for spoke A is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And it's going to be a virtual appliance, which is again the same router, 10.1.0.10. And OK. And while that's popping in there, I will go ahead and associate this with the subnet for spoke B. Right. And now I've got my routing should be the entire uh, process the entire connection, but let's go ahead and take a quick look. Pop over to monitor, networks, and just started a new preview screen, but I want to go back, get to topology, go to O2 tasks. And it does indeed show up. You can see without me going uh, too much farther, you can see here that I now have Associated with spoke B, I've got my spoke B route table with the two spoke A. And over here on spoke A, I've got my spoke A route table with the two spoke B. So it looks like we are headed in the right direction there. Really, all that's left is to see if I in fact have a line of communication between this server on spoke A and the server over here on spoke B, which again is going to end up being routed through my hub. So I already have a remote desktop connection into my spoke A virtual machine. So this is my virtual machine running in spoke A. And all I really need to do to make sure that this routing, this this peer-to-peer -peer transitive routing is working is connect to the computer, the the server that's on spoke B. And there I've got the 10.2.0.4 and I'm going to hit connect and it comes right up, ask me for credentials and I log in. Now, to be fair, it's entirely possible there is one slight goof that we you will never see. Uh, you would normally have to go through a little more to get connected, but there we go. I am now connected to my spoke B server and you see up here it's spoke B and that is connected over from my original, which is spoke A. All right? And all of that is made possible by transitive routing through this architecture. And that is the way that you configure transitive routing. Keep in mind, as I mentioned in the blog, that transitive routing is not always going to be the preferred approach. There may be other ways and, and other architectures and topologies that you might want to use. However, as you can see, it's a very viable option. It is very easy to set up. The only thing that was set up beforehand is I ran a script that you know, really just generated out the resources required to demonstrate this. Everything else that I showed you uh, really does represent the full level of effort that you would need to complete this. So thank you very much for joining me at INE for this short demonstration. And I hope it gives you some ideas, not, if not for transitive routing, then even just how easy it is to implement routing in an Azure virtual networking environment.